Hi, um, this is kind of a part two, I guess, to yes to the video, the last one I posted. But um, yes, I'm down here and being called a wolf. Um, well, the Lord revealed spiritual sayings to me about how to receive the Holy Spirit and how I received the Holy Spirit. And I went over it in this video right here. So, so um, who's calling me a wolf? Um, well, let's see what his spirit um, discerns about the spirit in me, okay? Um, now let's talk about this. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns and figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth, every, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit, right? And a good tree cannot bring forth, a good tree can't bring forth evil fruit, okay? And a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Therefore, by your fruits you shall know them. Now, I'm having you examine my fruits. The person calling me a wolf. Um, so, uh, an evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit, okay? So, he says this about me. Um, he says, says this, okay? A lot of cunning wolves and wolves in sheep's clothing that are twisting the truth to fit their wicked agenda. I have no wicked agenda, by the way, okay? Um, I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit has showed me when I examine my walk and how I received the Holy Spirit upon believing on him, the work that I must do. And then I had a true heart conversion. And um, good good, um, good fruit started manifesting by abiding in the vine, which is Jesus, um, the life water. He started supplying the branch, which is me and us, and started. he supplies us um, with good fruits. And he starts to move us in an obedient heart to keep his commandments, okay? We fall short. And that's what grace is. If you're walking a tight wire and you're trying to stay on the, on the line, it's not a license to sin. It's, you're trying to abide in the vine, abide in the vine, and I'm walking it. But I know there's a safety net under me. If I happen to fall, I know grace catches me. It's not a license to sin. I'm trying, then you get back up, you get out of your flesh, and you abide in that vine, and you keep walking that tight wire. That's what grace is, you guys. It's awesome. That's what he, and he does it. It's nothing we do. We can't produce these things in our flesh. But he says, I just recently cut off a cunning wolf in sheep's clothing that almost led me astray. She is the main one, if not the only person that was constantly encouraging and supporting me in my comment section. Okay. Remember I said, by your fruits, you shall know them, right? Um, an evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Okay. And a, and a good tree can't bring forth evil fruit. So if I'm an evil tree, I cannot bring forth good fruit. Okay. Well, he discerns, his spirit discerns a fruit in me, and, but says inwardly, I'm a wolf. How can that be if there's a good fruit that he's discerning? Okay, so let me just, so right here, he says, super friendly and gentle, but inwardly, she's a cunning wolf in sheep's clothing and double agent of Satan. Um, so he discerns that I'm gentle, but inwardly, I'm a wolf. I have a fruit of the spirit he's discerning, gentleness, but inwardly I'm a wolf. The fruit in, inwardly is gentleness, but look at here. An evil, an evil tree can't bring forth good fruit, and a good tree can't bring forth evil fruit. So an evil tree, if I'm an evil corrupt tree, I cannot bring forth good fruit. He says I'm gentle. So look at, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, I've been encouraging him, he says. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So, again, a good, an evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit. If I'm a corrupt tree, I cannot bring forth good fruit. So out of his own mouth, out of your own mouth, you know, you're discerning the fruit that is in me. And, and at the same time saying, inwardly, I'm a wolf. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. You see that? Gentleness. Okay? And he says, I am gentle, but yet inwardly I am a ravening wolf. So um, you guys can um, test that spirit, test that fruit um, it's out of his own mouth. So that's the spirit in him to show you guys Am I a wolf? How can I have a fruit such as gentleness, right? How can I have a fruit but inwardly be a wolf? It makes 
So listen, do you believe God? A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth gentleness. A good fruit. He literally named a good fruit. So just wanted to let you know that. So I'm not going to get into everything because it's too long. Watch the video that I, the one before this, okay, for my testimony. Um, how I received the Holy Spirit upon believing the work I must do. Um, you know, they got, you've got the believe only in grace and they don't like to talk about works. But then you've got the works only who, if I talk about grace, they go, they like to go right to, um, faith without works is dead. And they like to go right to, they like to go right to, to works and forget the grace. And they don't like talking about the grace. Well, we need the entire gospel to believe on him when you hear the word and you get pricked in your heart by hearing and receiving, not believing in vain. When you hear the word and receive the word, a conversion happens. What God grants you a godly sorrow repentance unto salvation. You receive the Holy Spirit upon believing when it's not in vain. And when you continue and you abide in the vine, fruits manifest, such as the one I showed you, gentle. Fruits will manifest. Um, and the, it's, it's the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the gospel, that gives you an obedient heart. And then you abide in the vine. And through him, he has you do good works because now my heart has a desire to keep his ways. My heart loves the word. My heart loves loves his commandments. Uh, my heart wants to obey him. My heart wants to put to death by the power of the spirit um, the deeds of the flesh and put my flesh under subjection and die daily and have newness of life. And But you have to believe the, the gospel. You have to believe the, the gospel first. You're not saved by a work. You're saved by grace through faith. It is a gift of God, not of yourselves, least not of works, least any man should boast. There's no work that you have to do. I don't have to go do a work to go get saved. Because look, at that he might, Jesus is the one who baptizes us. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Jesus is the life water. He's the living water. He's the water. The word washes you, you guys. That's how I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Even though I was full immersion water baptized in physical water ceremony six months ago. But but in 2019, I received the Holy Spirit this way, okay? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water, born of water and spirit, of water by the word. Jesus said, I'm the living water, right? Now you are clean through the word, which I've spoken unto you, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you hear the word and you actually believe, you get pricked in your heart. It's awesome. And then you are saved unto good works. You're not saved by good works. He says you're saved unto good works. And there's people that are saying, you're saved by it. You're saved by works. You have to do a works. If you don't do a work, this work, it's a righteous work. You have to do this work to be saved or you go to hell. No, Jesus is the one who baptizes you. Jesus will baptize you by the washing of water, by the word. One baptism and it's spiritual. The point is to receive the Holy Ghost. So he tells you right here. Now, here's how you go on to good works, right? After you receive the Holy Ghost, now you are clean through the word I spoken on you. Your heart gets pricked. True conversion happens. You have an obedient heart. He, he literally takes out your stony heart and puts a heart of flesh in there. He puts a new heart in you. That an obedient heart, it's a working faith. But works don't save you. But you're going to... You're going to do works. You're going to you're gonna do the work of God, the business of your father, your father's business. You're going to do these things after you believe. If you really believe and it's not in vain, just believe only and sit back and keep your old life. That's not true faith, okay? Because faith without works is dead. So if you don't have evidence of works after you believe, well, it's a dead faith, meaning you believed in vain. You just spoke it and you don't really believe. When you really believe a conversion, something happens in your heart, you guys. Okay, so once you are clean through the word I've spoken on to you, washed by the water of the word, there's your born again, water and spirit. Jesus is baptism. He's the one that does this. It's his baptism, okay? Abide in me. Here's how the good works manifest, the good fruits manifest, the obedient heart manifest. Here's how you're able to abide in him because you believed. The salvation is by grace. The salvation is a gift. You can't work to be saved. But once you are saved, once you are saved and a true conversion happens and you then here's how the good works, how you're saved unto good works. Good works are a result. It's part of being justified because Abraham's faith was counted for righteousness, but he was justified when he went out and obeyed God. But he didn't just go, I'm just going to obey God. 
I'm just going to, on my own, and in my own flesh, I'm just going to go try to obey God. I don't really want to, but I'm going to do it. No, his faith was counted for righteousness. He went and moved because his new, his heart, his heart was after God's heart. He, in love, wanted to obey. That's the difference. Power, the gospel, you can't do it without the power. God has to convert you to want to do it, convert you to want to obey. So by abiding in the vine, here's how you're saved onto good works. Here's how the good works happen. They manifest through the vine. Jesus is the vine. And if you're not in the vine and you're cut out of the vine or you're in your flesh for a moment, you got to get back in the spirit, back in the vine. And he moves your heart in love to want to keep his commandments. That's how you keep his commandments. That's how he keeps you. So once you're clean by the word, washed by the water of the word, then you, here's how you go on to good works. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except that it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. The same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So to say, oh, to even be saved, I better hurry up, and I don't have the Holy Spirit yet. Say, I don't have the Holy Spirit yet, okay? I gotta, what do I, what must I do to be saved? And they'll say, hurry up. Let me go and baptize you in water. Go find somebody um, who does it the right way, who's anointed. They'll go baptize you in a physical water ceremony so you can receive the Holy Ghost. Hurry up, go do this work first. Um, that person has to go and do a work. They don't have the Holy Spirit. No, minister to them. Minister to them so they can hear. Minister the word to them so they can hear and receive and believe the word. That's the work you must do. That's the first work to receive the power. To even be able to abide and do good works, to go on to good works, to go on to perfection, because it's Jesus who who continues the work that He started in you, not that you started in you. What must I do to be saved? First thing they say, they didn't minister the gospel to me. Go and find a minister to baptize you with water. Go and find someone. It has to be this way. It has to be this. Go to this church. They have to do it this way. Um, that's me on my own. Say I don't have the Holy Spirit yet. I don't have Him yet. I have to go and. Do a work to be saved. That's not the gospel. You're saved by grace. The gift of God. Grace through faith. So the first thing you have to do is give the person the gospel. They hear it. They believe it. They receive it. They're pricked in their heart. God grants them a godly sorrow repentance. You believe. The Holy Spirit comes in. A conversion happens when it's not. When your heart is right. And the ground of your heart is good ground. So the seed can take root. If you have ears to hear. Then the Holy Spirit will come in. A conversion happens. Then you're saved onto good works. You'll start manifesting fruits. You'll abide in the vine. Jesus is going to move your heart in obedient faith to then go on and put the deeds of your flesh to death by the power of the Holy Spirit. But you have to minister. When were you in prison, Lord? When were you sick? When were you not clothed? And he's like, for as much as you did this onto these, you've done it onto me. You have to minister to them, minister the gospel to them, the true gospel, so they can hear it and say, I have, I have sinned, um, I need a savior. And then they can, they can hear and believe the word. The first work you do, the first work isn't go find a man to water baptize you. If you don't have the Holy Spirit yet, the first work is minister to them so they can hear, be pricked in their heart, minister so the first work they can do is believe. And then they say, look that scripture up. The first work, what is the work I must do, Lord? The works to work, the work of God. And he says, the work you must do is believe on me. That is the first work, to believe. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The first work you have to do is believe. So say, then I believe, right? Then when I believe, I get conversion. I get converted. And then I'm going to work the works of God. But you have to minister to them. Don't send them off to go do a work to be saved. Minister the gospel. Let them hear so the Holy Spirit can come in. That's how you do it. That's how it was done with me. So I'm just letting you know, okay? So here you go. This is some more, okay? Let's see. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind <laughs> and be sober and hope to the end for the grace. You don't want to talk about the grace, what God did for you, what Jesus did on the cross? Um, hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought on to you by, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is a revelation of Jesus Christ, by the way. Thank you, Jesus. He that had ears to ear, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches, okay? For John truly baptized with water, physical water, okay? 
physical water. And then they went on to baptize with physical water also. <laughs> but it's about the Holy. It's about the Holy. Jesus does it. It's about the Holy Spirit, you guys. He fulfilled all righteousness. Um, that's why Jesus was baptized by John to fulfill all righteousness. And Jesus is the life water, the woman at the well, living water. Jesus is the water. Jesus is the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, the one baptism, okay? For John truly baptized with water, but ye, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. It's the Lord's baptism. It's the Lord doing it and confirming the word with signs following, amen. Spirit baptism, Holy Ghost, invisible spirit baptism, water and spirit. You're washed by the washing of water by the word. Jesus is the living water, water, Holy Spirit, spirit baptism. Jesus does it, okay? The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men, right? When I ask somebody, what must I do to be saved? If I ask somebody, what must I do to be saved? Here's what I heard, you guys. Go find someone to water baptize you. No, minister the gospel to them of grace. So they can hear and do the first work. Do the first work. This is the first work. And I'm not, this isn't easy believism. Jesus does this. This is the Bible. These are the scriptures. Don't leave these out. Don't leave these out. Then said they, this is the first work you do, okay? How, how, because it's Jesus doing it. It's not us doing it. Jesus doing it. This is the first work you must do. Then said they unto him, what shall we do? What do you want to do something that we might work the works of God? What must we do? And Jesus said unto them, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work that you believe on him whom he had sent. Now it's not just believing in a name, Jesus. Okay, I believe it. No, it's believing it's believing the entire word, not just this word, all of it being ministered, minister grace unto the hearers, minister the gospel to them. Let them believe, believe every word. I so did the spirit. I, I was in the Bible, believing the entire Bible, reading all of it and believing all of it and taking hold of the Holy Ghost. I believed the word. I believed the word that was made flesh. Jesus sent his son. I believed what his sayings were. I believed what the father said. That's what I did. And then he came in. And then my actions started. My mind changed first. Then my actions followed. Um, I, had an, I have an obedient heart. Then you are saved unto good works. Okay? But that's the work you must do first. First you have to do that. First you have to hear the word. And believe. How do you? That's what, you can't throw that out. That, those are the scriptures you have to do. That's the first work you need to do. That's why when he says when when they've fallen and stuff and you got to strengthen what remains and he tells you, um, um, go back, come, come back to your first love. Well, yeah, that means come back to the scriptures um, and believe. Come back and believe what Jesus said. Come back and believe what Jesus said, you guys. Yeah. So. I need baptize you with water unto repentance, right? But. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. And Jesus fulfilled all righteousness when he got water baptized for the Holy Ghost to come down. And now he does it. Jesus does it. So I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. John's baptism for remission of sin. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes <laughs> I'm not worthy to bear. He, Jesus, he shall baptize you with the Holy, with the Holy Ghost. Okay. It's one baptism and fire. Peter remembered it spiritual. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, physical water, the elements, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the living water. If you would have asked of me for a drink, I would have given you living water, washed by the water of the word. Now you are clean by the word I spoke unto you. That is the one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That is, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That is, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Jesus baptism, you guys. Jesus baptism. It's awesome. 
baptism of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. By hearing, you may be baptized. That's right, because the first work is to believe. And how can you know what to believe unless you minister grace unto the hearers? So minister grace unto the, hear, the hearers so they can believe. As so was I, praise Jesus. As so was I. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him, the first work, believe. Do this work first, okay? And then Jesus will have you, you abide in the vine. He'll convert your heart. Then you will go on to do these good works that you want to do so bad. And it won't be you doing it. It won't be you moving yourself to do it. It's the Holy Spirit by abide, abiding in the vine. He'll give you and supply you with everything you need to abide in the vine, right? So, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So then faith comes by hearing. How can I receive this? By, by believing? How can I believe? Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, faith without works is dead. That's a dead faith. Meaning, if you don't have good fruits manifesting, you don't have evidence of your faith, like, um, like, like Abraham did, like Noah did, you don't have evidence, but it's not you going to do a work to be saved. It's you doing it out of an obedient heart now because you believed and was pricked in your heart and a true conversion happened and you get a new heart transplant and a new mind. You get to put on the mind of Christ. It's awesome. He converts you by water and spirit, which is the living water by the word and the Holy Spirit, which is the word. There you go. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And okay, to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him, shall receive remission of sin. Because when you believe, you receive the Holy Ghost. When you believe, like I did, water and spirit. And how did I receive the Holy Ghost? I was washed by the washing of water by the word. I took hold of the Holy Spirit. I believed the words. I read the entire Bible and I believed it all. I believed it. And you start to open up the scriptures to me that I might understand them. And the Holy Spirit and the water of washing by the word came in and baptized me. The one baptism, okay? For remission of sin. Because Jesus cleanses you with his blood cleanses you with his blood. That's why blood and water came out of Jesus when they pierced him. He baptizes you with blood and water and you are dead. You are spiritually immersed. Baptism, you are spiritually immersed. Think spiritual. These sayings are not flesh. They're not carnal, but they're spirit. It's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. The word is life water. The word is life water. So when he's pierced with water and blood, that's the whole point. You're literally being fully, you're being full baptized, fully immersed spiritually into Christ. That's what it is. You're being immersed into Christ by believing you receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. That's how it is. Water and spirit. Jesus is the living water, the life water. He's the source. He's the one that does the baptism. It's his baptism. Okay. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. While Peter yet spake these words, remember, you are now clean through the word I spoke unto you, washed by the washing of water by the word, one baptism, spiritual water and spirit, which is Jesus is the life water, the woman at the well. If you would ask me to drink, I would have given you living water. So to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth, their hearts were pricked. They believe in him shall receive remission of sin. While Peter spoke these words, they were clean. Washed by the washing of water. There's your water. By the word to receive <clears throat> the Holy Ghost. While Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them, which faith comes by hearing, right? The Holy Spirit fell on them, which heard the word. They're already washed by the washing of water, by the word, clean by the word that was spoken unto them. They believed their heart was pricked. Then they went on to do good works. Because they abide in the vine and it's Jesus. It's power of the Holy Spirit. It's not us doing it. And works do not save you. But works, faith without works is dead. It's a dead faith. It's a dead faith. So if you don't have evidence of a changed life, a changed mind, newness of life, dead to the old self, fruits manifesting, if you don't have evidence of this, then your faith was in vain. You never really believed, did you? He didn't grant you a godly star repentance on the salvation. You never had, you had, you never had the right ground in the heart to hear the word. You weren't ministered onto correctly. You didn't hear the right gospel. So you understand this is how the first work you do is believe on him because then he comes in and it's him, grace, a gift. He's the one that moves you and you abide in him. He moves you. He moves you to obey and keep his commandments and love his commandments. 
He keeps you in the vine. Stay in the vine. That's how it works. It's him. It's power. Understand? Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, <clears throat> that you believe on him who he had sent. The first work you want to do is believe. Believe. When you hear the right gospel and you actually believe, your heart gets converted. Then good works follow, okay? You understand Jesus baptizes you, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now you are clean through the word which I spoke unto you. Because look at, remember right here? To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him, which is the entire word of God, okay? But when you believe the gospel, shall receive remission of sin. It's Jesus baptized. Jesus baptism, okay, water and spirit, it's spiritual, one baptism, it's all spirit, it's all spiritual, oh my gosh, it's all spiritual, it's awesome, praise God, it's all spiritual, while Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost fell on them, which heard the word, because faith comes by hearing minister, minister grace to the hearers, because you're saved by grace, it's a gift of God, so minister grace to the hearers, minister unto them, so they can receive the power of the gospel so they can have a changed life and newness of life and they can have power to put the deeds of the flesh to death and die daily so now you're clean through the word i spoke unto you the washing of water by the word and again abiding in the vine so he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved when you believe you get baptized the holy spirit enters washed by the water living water jesus the woman by the well if you asked me to drink i would have given you living water believe and is baptized shall be saved not talking about it's not talking about physical water baptism here if you believe and you're baptized by the one baptism the holy spirit water and spirit is jesus baptism by hearing the word so when you believe in our baptized you're saved but he that believeth not shall be damned so if you don't believe you don't have the holy spirit baptism you're damned it doesn't say you're damned if you don't go do a water work ceremony you're damned believing and baptized the whole point is to receive the holy spirit and I received the Holy Spirit before any kind of physical water baptism ceremony. So, um, just so you know. Okay. And yes, my sub count is dropping. Um, because they're not understanding that I'm not easy believism suddenly. <laughs> I, you guys know I have um, good works and fruits manifesting. And now the Lord's showing me a uh, deep... I'm under, my understanding's growing about what the gospel is and how I received him to begin with. So um, you cannot save yourselves by doing a work. So what must I do to be saved? Go get water baptism. Go find a man to water baptize you. No. What must I do to be saved? Minister grace to the hearers. Minister the gospel to them of grace so they can hear and their heart gets pricked. And they can be granted a godly sorrow repentance. And then God will do it, not you. God will do it. Wash him by the... Minister the word so they can hear the word. And the word will make you clean. The word will sprinkle clean water on you. The word will cleanse you from your filthiness and your idols. The word will, um, for remission of sin, save you, cleanse you, wash you by the washing of water, the living water. You cannot save yourself by doing a work to be saved. That's the whole point. I'm talking about what you must do to be saved, okay? Um, that's not the gospel. That that That's not the gospel that saves. Do you understand what I'm saying? Salvation isn't, salvation itself is not a work to be saved. Grace is what saves. My point is I want people to understand is the grace saves. Grace saves. God does it. And then you are saved unto good works. You have an obedient heart. God's doing this by abiding in the vine. But you have to hear the word first and be ministered the true gospel first, which is the first work is to believe. Believe what? Well, you need to hear the gospel because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith without works is dead which would make it a dead, vain faith. Um, no conversion happened. Um, no inner heart, inner man transformation happened. Um, no new heart transplant, no fruits manifesting, no, new, no, no changed life, no newness of life, no dead to self. You still look the same. You came as you are and you stayed as you are. That's faith without works is dead. That's a dead, vain faith. The works that are being done, Jesus does the works. He will continue the good works that he started in you, right? Jesus does the work in you and it manifests through you because you have a new obedient heart. So then good works manifest in you because you're abiding in the vine. It's not flesh producing it. It's not flesh mustering it up. It's not me going, let me go do a good work really quick to be saved. No, when you believe and Jesus comes in, your faith, when it's real faith and you had a true heart, tr heart conversion, 
Faith without works is dead. You're going to have evidence of a working faith in your life. The power that you did believe and abided in the vine and your heart was right. It fell on good ground. You understand? And when trials and tribulations and persecutions come, you're going to stay. Stay in the vine. Do not get out of the vine. It's power. God keeps you. He's the one that moves you to do good works. It's a new heart, a new mind. Okay? Not a work to be saved. Okay? Grace saves. Grace. What Jesus did, that's what saves. That's the saving part. Don't add to that. That's not the gospel. And that's why no fruits are manifesting in people. That's why. Listen. It's not a work to be saved. Grace is what saves what Jesus did. That's the saving part. Then there's different. There's Then there's you go on to do good works because you're abiding in the vine. Because by having that faith, Jesus is the power. He's the one doing it in you because you're abiding in the vine. You're a branch that's getting your supply, your nourishment, your power, your strength. Everything you're getting is from the vine. So when you really believe and you're, and you're added to the church and you have the Holy Spirit, he's moving you. So... Your faith is not dead. Your faith, you're going to go on and you're going to be a changed person. Newness of life, dead to self, which happened before my full immersion physical water baptism ceremony. This happened when I was washed by the water of the word by hearing the gospel and reading the scriptures and believing on them and taking hold of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, so not a work to be saved. You don't go to hell if you weren't physically water baptized by men. Because again, you're washed by the washing of water by the word. Jesus is the living water. Jesus baptized me with the Holy Spirit baptism. One baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. He is the living water. Washed by the living water of the word. Now you are clean. Now you are clean through the words which I spoken unto you. Because you heard and you believe. And your belief better not be in vain. Because faith without works is dead. Which means you have a dead faith. You never actually believed. You didn't hear the right gospel. You didn't have the right ground of the heart. You didn't actually believe. You didn't actually believe. That's the whole point. So if no fruits are manifesting and no changed life, you didn't really believe. So it's not dead faith though. This is not dead faith. You're going to go on to do good works. Saved onto good works. Not let me go do a good work to be saved. No. No, no, no. Have the right gospel so the power can move you and give you a new heart, a new heart transplant, a conversion of the heart, an inner man change that happens and a new mind and the Holy Spirit will start bringing his word to your remembrance whatsoever he said unto you and whatsoever he said he spoke Jesus Christ. He's always going to bring the word unto you, okay? By great, by, but saved by great. Okay, so not dead faith though. Um, real faith. Real faith that good works are a result of because Jesus is doing it. It's power. He's, he's moving you. He's doing it. He's doing it. We're not, we're slaves to righteousness. We're doing it. He's doing it. We're not um, walking in our flesh. We're walking in the spirit and then he moves us. That's how it works. It's awesome. Um, but saved by grace through faith, not of works. So you don't go do a work to be saved. That's my whole point, okay? If you want to go get water baptized after you're saved because you love Jesus and he's moving you to do that and you, um, that's what you want to do and um, in love because you want to do an example of what Jesus did. Um, but you don't do that to be saved because that's a work. That's you looking for a man going to do something to even be saved. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works, not of works. It's grace. He washes you by the washing of water, by the word to receive the Holy ghost. Jesus does the good work in us. And Jesus baptized me with the Holy ghost. Praise God. Jesus baptized me with the Holy ghost. That's right. Praise God. Evidence. Now here's evidence of it. You guys, that your faith was not in vain, that it wasn't a dead faith. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Okay, here's the good work. You want to believe on him. But if your faith is without evidence of good works, saved unto good works, then you had a dead faith. You never really believed. That's easy believism, okay? And then you got the other end of the spectrum, which is just, they're always talking about works. Go get water baptized. Not telling you that Jesus is the living water who baptizes us. Yes, he is. One baptism, okay? Spirit. Evidence is a changed life and mind, a new will, desires, deliverance, obedient heart, love for his commandments, keeping his commandments because you stay in the vine, right? Flesh being put to death by the power of the gospel, abiding in the true vine, newness of life, mind of Christ, put on the mind of Christ, right? Fruits of the spirit manifesting and this fountain of living water springing up in me right now. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, where did that go? It's pretty awesome. Fountain of living water springing up in me right now. Do you hear the true gospel? <laughs> I'll, do you hear the true gospel? He does it. He does it and then you move, right? 
Tell them about the grace of God because it's God who grace. You don't like, they want to hear about the grace. Tell them about the grace of God. Make sure it's still on. Oh, it's getting long. Okay, tell them about the grace of God because it's God who grants a godly sorrow repentance unto salvation. Repentance isn't a work, by the way. God grants it. Again, it's God. It's not us. It's not me going, oh, I just want to, so bad with tears. Um, I'm, I'm trying to repent. I'm trying to work up, muster up repentance myself. I'm so sorry, Lord. No, no, no. It's not how it works. God grants a godly sorrow repentance unto salvation. Remember, repent um, and and believe. you got to repent and believe the gospel. Well, how do you repent? Is it a work first? No, it's not a work. Again, it's power. God grants you a godly sorrow repentance unto salvation. So you have to repent and believe the gospel. You repent. He grants you a godly sorrow repentance. Then you believe the gospel unto salvation because by grace you're saved. And then it goes saved unto good works. Justification, sanctification. <laughs> That's how it works, you guys. That's like if you get the right gospel, he's going to get in you and he's going to do it. He's going to do it. This is awesome. Okay. Oh, my God. This is so, no, this is awesome. All right, right, all right. Jesus does it. Um, we see our sin and recognize your need for a savior, okay? The right heart so the seed can take root in the good ground, which is the seed is the word of God, right? Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Then we are converted, pricked in our heart by hearing and believing. The first works you do is to believe on him, but you have to hear first. So minister grace to the hearers, right? Um, believing in the fruits manifest as we ab abide in the vine. Talking fast because this is a long video so far. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. No works required for this free gift, right? Grace, it's a gift. Grace through faith. Saved by grace through faith, through faith, right? It's, it's a free gift. Not of yourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. So works is to, the works is to believe. Start here. That's my point. I'm giving you the right gospel so you can have the power so that if you're so concerned about doing good works, you want to do good works so bad, hear the right gospel so you can come in and he can change your heart and move you to do good works. So you stay in the vine. And then his power, his strength, his obedience, it's his heart that he gives you, his desires to obey his will. But the first work you must do is believe on him. So minister grace to the hearers. Come on. <laughs> but not in vain. It is God who will do a work in you. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, God will do a work in you. Uh, and you will not be the same. Then good works are a result of this true faith. Understand? Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but that which is good. Good report. The good news. Good tidings, the gospel, the good news. There's no work to be saved, but you're saved unto good works, right? So, but, but that, okay, let no communication that's corrupt come out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. You are saved by grace. It is a gift. You are saved by grace through faith. It is a gift of God, not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's step number one. Quit going ahead. Quit moving ahead to the work part. God will do that in you when he converts your heart, when you hear the true gospel. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. So when you minister grace, how do you minister grace? To the hearers? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You minister the true gospel. Didn't you minister unto me? Whoever, what, what you've done to one of these, you've done it on to me. Didn't you minister grace? Didn't you tell them the true gospel that I did it? That's what Jesus is saying here. Give them the true gospel so he can grant them a godly sorrow repentance unto salvation and then saved unto good works so he can convert their heart, so he can move them in an obedient heart to do God's will, so he can put to death by the power of the spirit the deeds of the flesh, so he can have them die to self, so he can produce through the vine, which is him, um, fruits of the Holy Spirit to manifest in you so you can abide, so you can do the right thing, so you can have a heart after God's own heart, so you can operate in love, right? So I already have the good works, fruits, all this good is manifesting through the vine, Jesus Christ. So now trying to show people how to receive the gospel, right? And have the power of the Holy Spirit, right? To abide and be transformed. It's to transform your mind. Be renewed and transformed by the renewing of your mind to prove the acceptable and perfect will of God. So you study to show yourself approved and these are spiritual sayings. Put on the mind of Christ. Dead to the old nature newness of life. Stop thinking in your flesh. This is the grace I received while I believed on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? And was granted a godly sorrow repentance unto salvation. I was weak and in my flesh and on hardcore narcotics and could not fight anything off. First I heard the word I believed it. 
Jesus baptized me with the Holy Ghost. Now you are clean through the word I spoke unto you, and I abided in the vine, right? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherein with he loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Where there's much forgiven, in my case and many others, where there's much forgiven, then you love much. So I keep the commandments because I love him. I love what he did for me. It's gratitude for what he did for me. I have a new heart. I have a grateful heart for what he did because much was forgiven. I was in much sin, okay? Even when we were dead in sins, even when I was dead in my sins, he quickened us together with Christ, added to his church daily. Jesus did it. He quickened me when I heard the word and believed. By grace, ye are saved. That's the true gospel. Then the works will manifest, okay? But you've got to tell them the true gospel because it's God that does it to begin with in them. You can't just tell them to go do a work. That's not how it works. Not how it works. Let them hear the first gospel, the right gospel, the true gospel, so he can convert you. He does it. God does it. Um, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ, that in the ages to come he might show his exceeding riches and his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For ye... For by grace you are saved. How are you saved? Go do a work. No, no, no. I'm talking about salvation. By grace you are saved through faith. When you hear the right gospel and your heart gets pricked, and you minister grace to the hearers. Minister grace unto the hearers. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Then, then they will receive the Holy Spirit upon believing. Then they will go on to do good works. Okay? Quit skipping ahead to good works. Minister the gospel to them. The first work is to believe. How do you? How can you be changed to even do a good work if you don't even know what to believe? Minister the grace to the hearers. For by grace you are saved. This is the gospel. Through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. That's the salvation part, okay? Not of works, lest any man should boast. God's, the living water is what washes you, okay? And you receive the Holy Ghost upon hearing the word and your heart will get pricked. For we are his, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So I'm not saying we're not going to do good works, but God's the one that's going to change us and move us to even do good works. Because even the Pharisees, even the self-righteous, even those that are not quickened by the Holy Spirit, they're going on doing their own good works also, aren't they? And they're doing good works to be saved, right? So, but look it. Unto good works. We're his workmanship. He's going to finish the good work that he started in us. It's his good work. It's his good work. He's the vine. And he's going to move us to walk in his ways and keep his statutes and judgments and do them. Give us a new heart. Create us a new heart. Put a spirit within us and cause us to walk in them. But you have to hear the true gospel so the power can come in. So you can be washed by the water and spirit, right? And quickened. Now there will be a new heart transplant, a new heart conversion upon hearing the word and receive and believe. And it's a working faith. It's justification and sanctification. Jesus does it in us as we abide in the vine. Hang on. I have to go inside really quick. Sorry. Okay. So look at talking about ministering grace under the hearers, right? Ministering grace. It's like they forget the first work is to believe. So God, if you want the person to go on to do good works, you have to show them what to believe in first and administer the grace, the true gospel that Jesus did it. But what Jesus did isn't good enough because look, this is all about grace, right? Minister grace into the hearers. And the first thing that's said, faith without works is dead. Our works are required. True faith produces works. <sighs> yes, the first work though, see how it goes right to works? Goes right to, right? Let's get to the work part. You can't unless you hear first and you do the first work, which is believe on him. First, you have to minister grace onto the hearers because Faith without works is dead. That's true. It's a dead faith. If you don't have anything, if you don't have any fruits or works manifesting in a new obedient heart and you're not having a changed life, there's no newness. You're not being transformed by the renewing of your mind first so you can believe, do the first work, believe. Then these works cannot happen. These works cannot happen. You can't go and just do a work to be saved. You have to believe, do the first work, believe first, and then God will do it. It's grace. Administer the grace. Minister the gospel. Minister the grace to the hearers because faith without works is dead. It'll be a dead faith if you come as you are and you stay as you are. That's true. True faith produces works. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm giving the true gospel so God can prick the heart and convert the person. The first work. Tell them the first work, not go do a work to be saved. Tell them the first work, which is to believe on him. Minister the grace unto the hearers. God does it, not us. 
That's the whole point of the gospel, all right? Um, so I talked about when I was the gospel that I received. I already talked about all this. Let's see. Um, power to believe, abide in. You get a new heart transplant, okay? We're ordained to walk in them. A new heart transplant, a new conversion, a heart conversion. Upon hearing the word and receive it, minister grace. So God can do it in them, okay? And then good works will happen. Then fruits will manifest and be produced through the vine. Um, you know, believe and it's a working faith, justification and sanctification. Don't, don't leave out faith and believe and grace. Don't leave out the gospel. Let God transform the heart, okay? That's the whole point of the gospel. Jesus does it in us as we abide in the vine. Power, when we believe the gospel that converts the heart unto the desires. Listen to this. It's power when we believe the gospel that converts the heart. Power converts the heart unto the desires and will of God in heaven. But salvation is not of works. We're saved unto good works when the conversion happens. But you've got to hear the gospel first. But they don't like believe and believe the gospel, minister the gospel, minister the grace to the hearers. They go straight to works. That's my point. You can't work it. God has to do it. You have to hear first. You got to do the first work. I'm going to the first work, which is believe. I'm trying to reach the lost. Believe is the first work. And to prove that your faith is not dead, that it's not in vain, you will go on to good works. But I'm telling you the gospel, the first work is to believe on him. That's how you get washed by the water and spirit to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost by grace. God does it. He grants you godly sorrow repentance unto, unto salvation. And then you're saved unto good works because he gives you his heart after his own desires and his own will. Saved unto good works. Have the right gospel, true gospel, and fruits manifest from the vine to you. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. But I'm telling you the first work is to believe on him. That's the first work you want to do. You can't cut straight to, you better do works, because then they're going to go about trying to do works to be saved. Show, give them the minister grace to the hearers so God can do it. And then they will work. Then this will happen. Okay? Um, a dead, vain faith if you don't have a changed life. If you, there's no works after this. But it's not our own works. The power of the gospel. Jesus is the one giving us, Jesus is the one doing it in us, moving us to even obey. It's a new heart, okay? Pay attention. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. It'd be a dead faith. You don't want to do dead works, meaning works save you. I got to go do a work to be saved. No, minister grace unto the hearers and be washed by the washing of water, by the word, you're clean through the word I spoke unto you, then you receive the gift by grace through faith, not of yourselves, not of a work, to be saved. Then God gives you a new heart. Then you go on to do good works, which shows your faith is not in vain. Understand? Give them the gospel so God can move them to do good works. Okay? Quit cutting to the work part. Give them the gospel of grace so God can do it. Then you will see fruits saved unto good works. Then you will see these things. You're born into world spiritual death. You're born in the world spiritually dead. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, the word made flesh, was made a quickening spirit. Born again of the Holy Spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One baptism, Jesus baptism, not flesh works. To be saved. You don't have to do any kind of work to be saved. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. God will move you to go do the work. But you have to hear the gospel, the first work. The first work you do is believe. That's how you reach the lost. That's how I was baptized, okay? It is the power of the gospel, faith and grace. God transforms the inner man. God transforms the inner man. Um, you go on to perfection, abiding in the vine. God does it, right? God does it. So last night it was raining. Um, still wet out today. And all this has me think is the gospel, okay? The true gospel. It's raining out, has me thinking of living water, Holy Spirit baptism by Jesus Christ. Jesus letter is the one. Jesus is the one. You don't need anyone. Jesus washes you by the washing of water by the word. When you hear the truth, he converts your heart and he washes you and he gives you the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, I cannot get enough. And that's true. I cannot. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, one baptism. Think spirit, not flesh, you guys. So to the spirit, right? Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your follow ground because God cannot grant you a godly soul repentance by hearing the word first. 
So you can have the faith. So you can do the first work, which is believe on him. So you can go on to good works, these good works that you love to do so much. You're, God's going to do it through you and work through you and give you the heart, love. If, you have, if I do all these things and I have not love, I have nothing. God will move you in love, not me moving myself in fear to go get baptized by a man. I'm so scared I'm going to die and go to hell. That's not the gospel. That's not good news. That's not how you do it. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up the fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. The Holy Spirit baptism of water and spirit. Jesus is a living water. When we have a soft heart, soft ground, good ground, the seed, the word of God takes root in the heart. When we hear the word and believe in Jesus, the heart gets pricked, right? And then they believed and the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Rain righteousness upon you. There's pouring out the Spirit, okay? Faith by grace, we are saved. Holy Spirit baptism, so awesome. But Jesus, now here we go, the Holy Spirit baptism. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? Right? And to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? The Holy Spirit. He got baptized physically water by John to fulfill all righteousness. The Holy Spirit fell upon him, okay? The Holy Spirit came on him. So to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, what baptism do you want? The Holy Spirit. Jesus is the water. Think spirit, you guys. They say unto him, we are able. Do you say we are able to be baptized with the same baptism that Jesus received? Jesus received John's baptism, water, elements, ceremonial baptism to fulfill all righteousness and the Holy Spirit came on him. Now someone greater has come to baptize you himself with the washing of water by the word. The word does it. He's the living water. Ask of this, ask him for water and he will rain righteousness upon you. So are we able to be baptized with the baptism that Jesus was baptized with? Um, we are able. We are able. And he said unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. John's baptism? No, the Holy Ghost, water and spirit. Jesus is going to do it. He's going to do it. That's how it works. Hearing the word, you guys, he does it. He's the water, the living water. It's all spiritual. Water and spirit is spiritual. That's the one baptism, spiritual baptism. And Jesus does it. It's Jesus Christ baptism. It's Jesus ministry of reconciliation. It's Jesus baptism. It's all spiritual. He does it. You only need Jesus. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Praise God, right? So Peter understood God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. It's even in Joel. It's even in Joel. I didn't put that. Sorry. Um, but God will pull out his spirit. God will pour rain righteousness on you. I will sprinkle in Ezekiel. I will sprinkle clean water on you and I will cleanse you from your filthiness and all of your idols. I will sprinkle clean water on you. Now you are clean by the word I spoke unto you. By hearing, pricked in the heart. Then the Holy Spirit fell on them after they heard, right? Washed by the washing of water. There's your born of water and spirit. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. <laughs> one Lord. So, you guys... Peter understood, okay? God will pour out. He acknowledged this, that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Pour it out. How do you pour it out? Oh, you rain righteousness upon you. That's how you pour it out. Living water. If you asked me of drink, I would give you living water, he told the Sumerian woman at the well. Holy Spirit re regeneration. You know Jesus is the living water. You know that. You know that Jesus is the living water. Okay. And it shall come to pass in the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, right? Because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy, right? The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. We overcome them by the blood of the lamb and the Lord and the word of our testimony and love not our lives unto death, right? And their young man shall dream, shall, she, shall see visions and their old man shall, shall dream dreams. But the point is, I will pour out my spirit. He's living water. He will pour out rain righteousness upon you, water and spirit. There's your one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The whole thing, Jesus does it when you hear the word and you receive the word and you do the first work, the first work. It's all Jesus' grace to believe on him. Then works and fruits will manifest and all that stuff will manifest through the obedient heart by abiding in the vine. That's the point. But give them the true, give them the true gospel because you just tell them to go do a work. That's not going to convert them. Give them the God, minister grace. Minister grace unto the hearers, okay? 
Do the first work. Believe on them. That's how you minister the gospel to people so they can be converted. And then you will see their life transform like mine and yours. And you will you will see these good fruits manifesting. You will see good works. And you will see a changed life, a, state, a changed mind, a new heart in that person, a new desire after God's own heart and God's will. Okay? And then Peter asking, can any man forbid water? What do you think he's talking about? These sayings are spirit, the flesh, flesh, physical elements, water, John's baptism, the, the flesh profits nothing. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus is the life water. If you ask me for a drink, I would give you living water, fountain that flows out of your belly into everlasting life. Yeah. Um, Peter asked, can any man forbid water? No, you cannot because it's Jesus' baptism, living water. Who do you think? What do you think Peter was talking about? Can any man forbid water? Carnal mind. Carnal. The flesh profit nothing. It's a quickening spirit. Can any man forbid water? Think spiritual, the living water. You are washed by the washing of water by the word. You are saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves, not of works. The first work you must do is believe the true gospel. And then God does it. God moves you to faith without works is dead. You will not have a dead faith. You will have evidence of a new life, a new mind, a new heart, new everything. You will have a new everything, everything, and you will know, you will know him and you will love his commandments and they're not grievous. And if you fall, that's, that's the grace. If you fall, it's not a license to sin. You don't want to sin. You want to please your Lord. You want to please God because that's the heart you have. It's his heart, his spirit, his spirit wants to do God's will. His spirit is moving you to do it. It's not you doing works to be saved. Tell them the right gospel so God can convert their heart, prick their heart, and give them an inner man transformation, newness of life. So we get, you get put right into, full immersion right into Christ. Spiritual, because he's the living water. Think spirit, okay? Um, that's all I'm going to say about this. All right, God bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray you understand. God bless you in Jesus' name.